Monster Spider. This is what this car can do flat out. Hope you enjoy. this car, then you just don't enjoy driving. How's it going everyone? My name is Adam and welcome back to Driven Nashville. If you happen to be new to the channel, we produce weekly enthusiast driven car content. And today we are talking about the incredibly cool 2020 Porsche Boxster Spider. This is the 982 generation or the 718, whichever you prefer to call it. This is the new generation. This has all of the amazing go fast goodies from the Cayman GT4, including the 4.0 liter flat six making 414 horsepower and 309 foot-pounds of torque makes this car go to 60 in 4.2 seconds with the manual which this one is specced with if you happen to get PDK it drops it down to 3.7 seconds to 60 and increases the torque which is really nice to 317 foot-pounds of torque which I really wish to be honest with you this car had the PDK just because I do think overall it's a better transmission but the manual is incredible we're going to talk about that on the point of view drive I'll tell you if you are lucky enough to be able to get a spider go ahead and do it because it is still a fantastic car, but it is not perfect. And I'm gonna be detailing a lot of the different, the difficulties of owning this car, including the roof mechanism, the squeaky brakes with the PCCBs. I'm also gonna be spotlighting some of the uh, kind of differences with the gas particulate filter and the way the car feels and the way it sounds versus the previous generation, which we did review. I'll go ahead and put a link to that. I also wanna give a really big shout out to automotivetouchup.com. They are our new title sponsor for Driven Nashville. Guys, I have been driving cars for a long time now, and let me tell you, especially in Nashville, you're gonna get a lot of rock chips. You're gonna get a lot of scratches on your cars, right? It's almost impossible to avoid. A color like gentian blue here, good luck trying to do paint repair on it. But let me tell you, I've researched this company, I've used their products for years. I asked them if they'd be interested and they agreed. So here's the thing guys, they make OEM grade products. They paint, mix, and make the product as you order it. It is so difficult to get colors like this right. And that's the this is the one company that can. So check out automotivetouchup.com and support them. I'm telling you, I give them my full endorsement. Their products are incredible. So let's get into this review. I appreciate you watching. If you're interested in this content, please subscribe because this is gonna be a good one. We have an incredible day today. It's 74 degrees. It could not be nicer. And I'm so excited to share this All car. All right, guys, let's start off here. One, let's talk about the spec. And two, let's talk about the differences between the 981 generation and the 982 generation. So they restyled the front just a little bit from the 981 to the 982. They added extra aerodynamics. They widened these out just a little bit. They changed up the rear diffuser quite a bit. They made it a quad exhaust as well instead of the center exhaust. They've of course gone with the new restyled 3D printed Porsche logo back here. This does have the 718 spider delete. So keep that in mind. Usually you'd have a, a logo on the back of the car. This color, oh my God, this color guys is called gentian blue. I do not know how this is not a PTS color because it is literally color changing. You can see here, it, it is purple. It looks purple. Here, it looks blue. As you move on outside of the sun, it looks dark blue or purple. At night, it almost looks black. It is just the best color. Miami blue is a very, very, very close second. I actually like this color better than Miami blue. We reviewed a Cayman GT4, and I will tell you, I thought that was the best color ever. Now that I've seen this color, I gotta say, I would spec mine in this. It's just a little bit more adult, a little bit more subtle, still gets you plenty of attention and plenty of looks, but boy, does it look good when it color changes in the sunlight. Now, coming on to the inside of the car here, wow, let me just tell you, this has the 18-way adjustable seats. Now, I will tell you guys, if you want to get the Porsche buckets, go for it. They're very uncomfortable. If you're going to track your car, you definitely got to have them. It allows you to have your racing harnesses right there. If you're not going to track your car, these seats are the way to go. They are so comfortable. If you can't get comfortable in 18-way adjustable Porsche buckets, then you got problems, let me tell you, because you can adjust everything here 
here, here, forwards and backwards, up and down. It's unbelievable. When I first got in this car, I played with all of these settings and man, I got it so dialed in. Oh, I was just in heaven, right? I mean, I literally, this car will actually make you feel better after driving it just because it takes all the pressure off your lower back and oh, it's great. Now, other details, this right here, that's an illuminated door seal. They charge you for that. That is a CXX option to make it yellow. This right here is aluminum. Is This is usually just plastic like this. This is leather stitched, right? That's another upgrade. You have the upgraded leather and Alcantara package with the color contrast stitching. You have yellow gauges. They charge you for that. Yellow sport chrono package. They charge you for that. Carbon fiber interior. Now, another couple of other fun upgrades. This has the smoking package. You absolutely have to order yours in the smoking package. And maybe my most fun upgrade, leather back seats. Guys, leather back seats are a really, really rare upgrade. So the gentleman who originally spec'd this car, the very, very lucky soul, right, who was able to get one, he did it right. And he also went with Porsche PCCB brakes. So let me give you the true unbiased or my unbiased overview of this, all right? So if you want to get Porsche carbon ceramic brakes, right? They're great. They are so bitey though. So you have to be really careful that you don't emergency stop. I've been driving cars, these PCCB brakes. I've had several Porsches now we reviewed. If something darts out the side of the road or you think somebody's gonna make a move on you and you accidentally push the brakes too hard, they can literally bruise you with your seatbelt because they are that bitey. On the track, they're incredible though. They will not fade. And on the street, they're incredible from the fact that they won't cause a lot of brake dust on your nice, beautiful wheels. But the negative is they squeal. And I'm telling you, they squeal to a point where it makes it sound like you need a brake change. You know how they put a metal compound in the brake rotors or the brake pads so that they make that annoying sound so you know to change them. Well, if you're rolling up to a stoplight in, these car, in this car, which of course you're gonna do often when you're driving around the street, everybody is gonna look at you because your brakes are gonna be squealing very audibly loud. So just be mindful of that, especially on a cool day like today. Uh, they just make a lot of noise. So it's pros and cons it too. While I'm talking about the brakes, also talk about the tires, right? So these are Michelin Cup 2 tires. These are the tires that come with the Spider and the GT4 from the factory. These are 245 fronts and 295 rears. I will tell you, these are street... Yeah, let me say this. You can drive these on the street, but these are definitely more track-oriented tires, right? These are summer tires, so you're really not supposed to drive this car below 40 degrees. They say do not drive when it's freezing outside. They can actually crack, and let me tell you, these things can very, very, very easily break when it's cold outside. So this is absolutely a summer car. But otherwise, PDLS headlights, these are the best headlights. These lights light up, unbelievably cool. I just think this is one of the best looking cars ever made. With the haunches and everything else, with the 3D printed lights, these lights look incredible when you're actually on your indicators and whatnot. The way the rear looks, the way the rear uh, wing comes up, just fantastic, beautiful car, gets all the right looks, love the spec, and hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about what they did with the exterior differences. And while we're talking about the spec, you do have the color match keys, which I don't know about you, I'm a sucker for that. All right, I wanna spend just a moment talking a little bit about the rarity of this car and how difficult it is to get. Let me tell you, I've been trying to get a new one of these myself. This is a personal vehicle, not a dealer car, nothing like that, right? For the better part of a year. I walked into Porsche Nashville around November of last year. I said, guys, I really want one. I can afford it. Why are ready? Put me on the list. They said, gotcha, Adam. We know you can, you can you qualify for it, blah, 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 blah. I think there was three or four guys ahead of me. So I figured six months, I should have the vehicle, right? Well, Porsche of Nashville has gotten two of these two Porsche Spiders in all of 2022. It is almost, it's September now, right? So two in what, nine months? Very, very hard car to get. So what that basically tells you is every year for your local dealership, they're probably gonna get two to three of these. So supply and demand, there's a lot of guys that would love to drive this car around and that can afford a $129,000 car here 
So be prepared to spend what they call ADMs, additional dealer markups. So let's say you cancel your allocation and that goes back to the dealer. That allows them at that point, if they didn't have a contract already with an ADM fee to sell it for over MSRP. It's, it's up to them to make money, right? You can't blame them. So in the end of the day, you're going to have a hard time finding this particular vehicle either on the used market or on the new market because you ain't getting a new one right now or very, very difficult to get. So this is the only one for sale or getting ready to be the only one for sale that I could find. I literally went on and searched, you know, 718 Spider for sale. If you want to get a 2016, the previous generation, you can. If you want to get this generation, well, you're SOL. There was just not a single one on the market that I found. Now that could of course change tomorrow or change next week when I launch this review. Who knows, right? But as the point of shooting this, this was the only one available or will be the only one available. So essentially as a dealer, we can decide how much we wanna charge over. I mean, it is literally supply and demand. Now we're really fair, so we'll probably just do five or 10,000 over MSRP on this car, which was 129 and somebody's gonna get a great car in literally like new shape. I mean, the paint is perfect. The car's perfect, drives great, 3,000 miles, right? And everybody's gonna be happy. But in the end of the day, this car could very well go for $145,000, $150,000. In fact, I was actually seeing these at the peak of the car pricing a little bit earlier in the year, you know, before they had the Fed funds raising and all that. I was seeing these at about $155,000 to $165,000. So that's twenty to 25000 over MSRP at that point, and even more in some cases. But at least with this car, you're getting a fantastic spec. This car was dialed in so well. Uh, thank you to the gentleman who spec'd it because I personally don't think I could have spec'd this car any better. I love it. I want to talk about one of the biggest negatives. And if you're looking to buy a Porsche Spyder, you really need to watch this part of the video because it's very important. The roof mechanism is not automatic. What I mean by that is a 100% manual. You have to do every little bit of it. So let me show you how this works. And by the way, I'm not the expert at it. I put this roof up and down now three, four times. It's not that easy. It's, in fact, if you're a little lady and you don't have a lot of strength, you're probably not gonna be able to do it. Because lifting the roof off of it is a little tricky. First of all, you have to start off with the key. Push the button at the bottom there. That pops this open. Now I'm wearing leather gloves because you have to put your hands physically on the car and if you're OCD like me, you don't want to get fingerprints. So you actually push it up and then at that point you can lay it, let off. It is spring operated, which is somewhat nice. Then you have to lift up these. So you have to go ahead and do it on both sides. Now you don't actually have to lift it up. If you pull it up, it will push them up themselves. But I like to do it just because you know, I don't want to damage the mechanism if I can avoid it. Now, this is heavy, guys. I'm telling you, this is not a light piece right here. So, you put it here. Then, you have to go ahead and push this down. Nice and gently. Push it until it clicks. Then you have to come back here. Now, come over here, Brian. Right here is where this is. There is a button that is right here that is hidden. I'm telling you, if you didn't know that it was there, you will not be able to find it. It is so frustrating. I remember the first time I had to watch a YouTube video to figure this out, uh, about lost my mind, right? It should be a red button or they should put something on it. It is right there though. You can feel it, but you really have to play with it, okay? That releases this clip. At that point, you wanna go ahead and rock it in, okay? Oh, we got a leaf in there, there we go. You want to rock it in. So what I mean by that is, and then it'll click. So you start in the back and then kind of push it forward, okay? So that one's done. And you got to walk back over here now. And you got to repeat the same process. Finding that button, a little bit tricky. You can go ahead and make a G-spot joke on that one, boys. Okay, now, at this point, you have to walk back to the vehicle. You want to get your key. Okay, now I've sat in the car, I turned the car on. You really have to like muscle this thing over to make sure that this latch right here, right here, this latch, and then you have to push this button down here to make sure that it closes. If it doesn't secure here, it will not close. So you kind of have to hold it here. And you can see it didn't close there. So it's just finicky, okay? So now you have to like play with it. You have to push it back down, okay? Hold that, and then you're good. 
So you have to kind of redo it until you get it. If you're wondering, you know, where is the glorious engine? Well, it is right here. It's directly behind you, which does sound incredible when you're on the, the POV drive, you'll hear it. But uh, you cannot see it at all. Even with this mechanism raised, uh, you can only put fluids in it. They have everything covered up. And let me tell you, when you turn the vehicle off, you'll feel, you really feel the heat coming off the, you know, the, the tires here and, and this whole area, and then this right here. But otherwise, there's no way to see the beautiful 4.0 liter flat six engine. And I wanted to have another little heart to heart with you. I will tell you that the new version of this car has gas particulate filters. So before we get into the POV drive, I want you to know that the car just doesn't sound as good as the previous generation. The previous generation had a 3.8 liter flat six, right? They came out of the Porsche 911. It made 385, 390 roughly horsepower, so less than 414, but it had a sense of driving thrill and sound that just felt more real and authentic. particular vehicle when you get in it from a first impression it just doesn't feel like a GT4 right it feels more just like a base level car in my opinion now when you get on the fuel don't get me wrong it's very fast you know it has all the upgraded suspension that trickles down from the 911 and all that stuff but in the end of the day it just doesn't have that soul characteristic and that's because all of these new emission requirements have been basically and you could feel it guys I'm telling you when you can feel the exhaust you can feel the engine it just feels like it's being held back you know Dundon has a good set of headers and stuff you can really open up these cars and it would not only add a lot of good low-end torque because right now let me tell you with 309 foot pounds of torque it does tend to lag a little bit a little bit below 4,000 RPMs. So it'll really open up the car, it'll make it you know, a lot more mid-range power, and uh, and it's just gonna transform the, the driving experience. But, all right, that's enough chit-chat, right? Let's go for a nice spirited drive on a beautiful day and see how this thing performs. All right, guys, let's go for a point of view drive. Now I wanna let you know that the car is in exhaust mode. Here's what it sounds like without. Here's what it sounds like with. Doesn't drastically change it, not as much as the GT2 or 3 RS, but it does make a little bit of a difference. I do have the wing up, I have the auto blip technology turned off because it's terrible and I hate it. I don't really care about fuel economy in a car like this. And I have the auto blip tur turned on, which is a big deal. A lot of cars still don't have that. That makes this car so easy to drive. Now I wanna start off the point of view drive by just see, I wanna show you how easy this, are, this car is to drive, right? So we're, we're on a pretty bumpy road. Look at that, that's a shift into second. Engine's barely lugging 1,000 RPMs. This car is such a good dual personality car, and I don't think a lot of the reviewers have covered that. You can baby this car so well. You can, the, the suspension will not beat you up that bad. Even on a pretty bumpy road like this, I'll be honest, other than the Cup 2 tires spitting up some rocks, it's still comfortable. Now, if you do hit that button right there, it'll go ahead and adjust the, you know, the shocks and it'll make them pretty tight. But I just want to share that, you know, if you're driving around town and you want to get decent fuel economy and you just want to lug, this car will do it so well. And you'll really, really enjoy the driving experience. You don't always have to be going 1010 to enjoy it. And that is one of the fun parts about driving the Spider and the GT4, frankly, that I really enjoyed. You know, if you just want to have a nice relaxing drive with your wife like this, you can. The engine will lug and it's simple and easy, decent fuel economy. You can get into the low 20s per gallon and you can have a good time. Now, if you want to enjoy yourself, all you got to do is put your foot into that gas and you're good to go. Now, the, the tires aren't quite warmed up yet. So we're going to have to go ahead and do that. Now, short shifting there, I'll tell you, you're not going to extract the power of this car. You really got to rev it out. So one of the other big negatives of this car is the really, really tall gearing. I'll give you an example of what I mean by that here in just a minute. Okay, here's what I mean by the tall gearing. So 30 miles an hour, 
40, 50, 60, 70. And, and by the way, I wasn't I wasn't giving it the, the gas there. I was just letting it rev out. But that's 80 miles an hour in second gear. I mean, it actually tops out at like 86 miles an hour. So even in third gear here, you're doing 60 miles an hour and you're only now in the power band. So the power is right around the mid fours all the way to about 8,000 RPMs. So if you really want to enjoy the car, you're going to have to rev it out, which means you're only really going to be able to use second, third and fourth gear. And really, there's only a handful of tracks, frankly, in the country that you can actually rev fourth gear all the way out. It's just that tall of a gearing. I will also mention, you know, when you're just cruising, right, the car is pretty quiet. It only actually gets loud when you get to about 4,000 RPM. So let me, let me give you an example of what that's like. It's quiet, and then as soon as you get to 4,000, It transfers over and now it's in loud mode so you know it'll it'll open and close the valves as you as you drive but if you want to keep it loud you really got to give it the gas and then it's good to go now the car does not have a lot of throw you back in the seat horsepower so you really got to run it out to get the power it just it only has 309 foot-pounds of torque and let's be honest that's not very much these days I actually think that this car could use another 5, 10, 20 foot-pounds of torque and it would be perfect. And I do think if you change out the exhaust, like I was saying earlier, you're going to add that wonderful mid-end mid -end, uh, torque in the power band that I think would really help this car and not only help your lap times, but just help your overall driving experience. But when you are in the power band like that, You know, it really is fun. It's a lot of power. But if you're not in the power band, like I'll give you an example. Like let's say you're in fifth and you go ahead and give it full throttle. You just don't go anywhere. You know, there's no get up and go. There's no turbochargers, right? There's nothing to propel you. So you really gotta, you gotta keep it in third gear. And then you do get a little bit of thrust, right? You get a little bit of fun and woo. You know this is this is fun driving but if you're not in the power band it's not that great now when you are ready to go though it's fun don't get me wrong this is still a gt4 right the brakes are incredible like that you know look at that I'm doing 100 miles an hour and I'm only revving five to six thousand rpms so the gearing is just so tall in this car now having said that is it fun hell yeah that auto blip this is one of the best manuals in the game the car is absolutely fantastic to drive you know, we're heading down some of my favorite roads. If you guys watch a lot of my reviews, you know I know these roads really well. We still got to take it easy, but in general, we can have a little bit of fun. That's full throttle, by the way. So again, on these back roads, I'm winding the car all the way out. Most modern cars, right? I would go ahead and just be shifting, but in this car, in order to get the power, I gotta push it. That's just the way it is. Is it fun to drive? It's amazing, guys, it really is. You know, I don't have the suspension on beat me up mode because these are fairly bumpy country roads, but in the end of the day, the driving experience it's it's almost second to none it really is the manual transmission in this car is world-class it is unbelievably good you know the michelin cup twos they're they're warming up i could feel them they're starting to stick you know they're they're incredible the balance of the chassis is incredible 
you know, overall, it is one of the best driver's cars ever made. They, you know, it has a lot of the trickle down 911 parts, including the front suspension and the rear suspension has been tweaked in the new generation. All the new aero that they've added, right, with the golf balls, you know, in the front there, which I'll show a little clip right now. Uh, it's just incredible what they've done with the vehicle. Uh, but again, it just has some negatives with the gearing. And I just think it needs a little bit more torque. If this thing had 330 or 340 foot pounds of torque with 414 horsepower, I think it'd just be perfect. And, and a little bit of exhaust and a little bit of tuning with the engine, you got yourself a perfect sports car. You now guys, real quick, you can see here, you know, you've got a couple of different um, screens that you can change here. You can see the engine temperature and oil pressure. You've got your music. You can have navigation here as well, which is kind of cool, right? You can see here my consumption driving a, like a lunatic is 11.9 miles a gallon. I've had that as high as 18 driving this car uh, with some spirited driving. So, you know, you, it's not a terrible car as far as fuel consumption, but it does run on premium. So keep that in mind. It's not necessarily the most economical car to drive. It does have the tire pressure monitoring system as well and your sport chrono if you want to initiate that you could also put that on the screen here as well uh, by going to home car and then sc right and this is your reference laps and all the stuff that you can do here so it's really cool this is all integrated into the car again this is a track car in the end of the day so it has all the technology to record your laps built in uh, but I just wanted to share that with you real quick. Well, guys, this is my conclusion. You know, thank you so much for watching our content. You know, these are the days that I live for when it comes to making car reviews, right? Beautiful fall days, incredible sports cars like these. Now, I got to be honest with you, this car just isn't perfect. If it had the automated roof mechanism, if it didn't have the gas particulate filters right, if it just had a little bit more of the old 981 DNA, which you could do. I mean, again, let me get this on it. Be honest with you guys. If you want to take off those heavy gas particulate filters and the, you know, the large mufflers and put a, a Sharkworks exhaust on this thing or what have you, this thing is gonna transform into maybe the best sports car on the planet. But out of the box, it's just not quite perfect. Now, as you saw in the point of view drive, it smokes, okay? It really does. I mean, this thing between 4,000 and 8,000 RPMs is unbelievable. One of the best shifting manual transmissions with the automatic blipping, the brakes, the way it can, you know, it's a momentum car, the way you can take turns, the Michelin Cup 2 tires, I mean, it's just fantastic, right? It's a driver's car all day, every day. But is it perfect? No, it's just not. So just know that and I hope this review helped you. Would I still buy one? Absolutely. If you can find one in this spec, you know, with, with, with everything that this one has for $129,000 MSRP, just, just buy it because you're, you're going to love it. And if you want this car, it should be listed soon. Uh, it might be sold by the time the review drops. You know how these things go. But if it doesn't, you know, and I think with the recession now, it could take a little bit longer uh, to sell the car than it would have a couple months ago. But I would highly encourage you to buy this particular car because I think it's going to hold its value really well. And I think it'll be a special place in history because let's be honest, they're not going to be making the 4.0 liter flat six forever. So big shout out to Brian. <laughs> Always amazing to work with this guy. We've become great friends over the last year of working together. Thank you again to AutomotiveTouchUp.com for sponsoring the channel. Finally, we have uh, the ability to self-fund this. I just bought a new Mavic Pro 3. It's almost a $3,000 drone with the Fly More package and taxes. So uh, just, just so thankful to be able to actually have some support so I can continue to bring you guys weekly con car content. And uh, I think that's it for me. You know, if you're interested in the content, subscribe, share this with anybody you think you might enjoy it. And thank you again for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, we love making content like this. We'll catch you on the next review. The next shot's a drone flyaway. And that's it for me. I'll talk to you later.